to see drift up just a little bit. And John Curtin, what do you think? Well, guys, I think that they are happy to be where they are right now by virtue of pitting here on the backstretch. Their main problem tonight has been because of pitting on the backstretch, they get back. They have to deal with the lap cars, the cars on the inside of the line on the restart. Once they get out and get away from that, the times are very similar to what Rusty Wallace, the leader, has been running. Now, we told you that they had a bad push in the car early. Right now, they seem to have gotten that problem adjusted, and these guys hope to finish well. I think they want to win it. I don't think they're here just to finish fifth. Well, he has won seven times at this racetrack, this particular event three times, and Dale Earnhardt has not led a Winston Cup race since Watkins Glen. And his first, first ever win in NASCAR Winston Cup competition was at this facility in April of 1979. Was that what NWC stands for? NASCAR, NASCAR Winston Cup. Cup. Uh -huh. tell you up front mark martin is gaining on rusty wallace business is picking up in the front about what two probably maybe less than that as mark closes in on rusty kyle Petty is finally taking his mellow yellow pontiac to the truck i think he's going to put it up for tonight rusty comes down and leads the 286th lap of the evening Field summary will show you where everyone's running. Now, Rusty hasn't seen this in a long, long time. Hasn't looked up in the mirror and seen some car gaining on him. Because Mark Martin has been back in the back of the field, laps down and back in the field. Now, all of a sudden, this is the race for the lead. Rusty's turning laps in excess of 207 miles an hour. And the average speed of the race is 85. 207. Did I say 207? Yeah. 107. Yeah. 107. <laughs> it is the world's fastest half mile but it isn't that fast it's not that fast right. right. well it's 10 o'clock eastern time and for those of you just joining us we have 132 laps to go in this bud 500 that is currently being led by the number two car of rusty wallace and there is mark martin the valvoline ford car number six running second third is brett bodine then fourth, Morgan Shepard and Dale Earnhardt. Just a lap ago, Rusty Wallace caught Jimmy Means over in turn two, was able to get by fairly easily. Mark Martin got hung on the outside, coming off the corner. We can see he lost five or six car lengths to Rusty. Now, it looks like Earnhardt has caught, yes, he has caught yeah. Morgan Shepard. So this battle heats up. And both, both of them may be catching Brett Bodine, who is having his best run of the year. Brett is currently third in his best finish of this year, a fifth at the second Pocono race. But it is still Rusty Wallace, and so far he has uh, been able to control things. No one has been able to take the lead away from him in the last many, many laps. I'm Bob Jenkins, along with Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Curtin, and Jerry Punch. Mark Martin is three-quarters of a second behind the leader, Rusty Wallace, with Brett Bodine almost four seconds behind. Mark, uh, rather Morgan Shepard is fourth, four seconds back, and Earnhardt is 4.33 seconds back. And here is Jerry Punch with a report. The big question mark right now is could Rusty Wallace make it all the way on fuel with 120 laps to go? Well, this is their computer here in the Miller Genuine Draft Pit. Let me show you. By calculations, according to what he's been getting on gas mileage, the maximum lap we could go would be 499.4. He would run out of gas a half a lap after taking the white flag. That's how close it would be. So he will need at least one more stop or a lot of luck to make it all the way. Let's check in over there in the back pits with John Kerner. Jerry, we talked about how the Richard Children's crew has worked and worked and worked to get that car right. Just
just talked to Andy Petrie. He says, no problem. They can go the way. They, they can go the distance by about a lap, two laps. But just in case the car sputters, they've got a single gas can filled with Unical gasoline waiting here in the pits in case Chocolate Myers has to go across the wall and give it a little boost. Well, this brings up another interesting aspect as we click off the last 115 or so laps of this race. Now a fuel concern begins to pop up. Normally not a problem on a short track. We Lake, very seldom talk about it. Lake Speed is backing up a little bit. He's been up front all day long. Now he's back with Harry Gant, Rick Mast, and looks like Harry's trying to get by him and takes a look on the inside. Josh, what's wrong with the 28 car? Well, the car has gotten very, very <laughs> loose on Lake Speed over the last few laps. He's had to back it off. Of course, uh, they may have to make another pit stop. We get a caution. They'll come in, try and tighten that thing back up. But right now, the 28 car is very, very loose. Well, the 33 car was very, very loose coming yeah. off the second corner of the last lap. Yeah, he very again, almost lost it. But being the great driver he is, he got her back under control. There you can see that we're well under the race record, but that's because back in 1971, Charlie Glotzbach, charging Charlie, ran this race without a caution and average of 101 miles an hour as Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard are tooth and nail. And that's almost hard to believe that this race could go 500 laps without a caution. Yeah, that's true. What about Mark Martin? Now, we talked about Earnhardt and Rusty. Jerry, what's the answer to that question? After some quick calculations, Steve Mills says that Mark Martin, Valvoline Ford, should be able to make it all the way. No concern on fuel there, so they're hoping maybe Rusty's calculations are correct, and he will run out of gas a half a lap from the checkered flag. Now, of course, all this is dependent upon the fact that uh, we must go green the rest of the way. There is... Uh, Harry Gant just went by Lake Speed. Took that spot away. Now we see Rick Mass coming up. All these cars waiting for position. Harry's now eight. Yeah. Lake's in ninth in the one car. Rick Mass is in tenth. Michael Waltrip in the 30 car. Here's the replay of how Gant got by Lake. Goes in, just oh. touches him in the back bumper a little bit. And away he goes, and Michael Walter went by Rick Mast. And now Michael Walter is on the inside of the 28 car as they go by Jimmy Spencer down in turn one. Michael Walter haven't said a whole lot about him tonight. He's in the 11th position. What a good race. Yeah. One lap down. Yeah. Michael hasn't had a good year. It's good to see him uh, in there running good. And once again, he gets jammed in behind the slow car this time into Jimmy Me. Napa Now Harry Gant has just totally driven away from late speed after he got around. We understand that a couple of drivers have radioed their crews suggesting that they be relieved. One of them is Jeff Gordon, the other is Dick Trickle. So it is a tough, hot night out there on the by there, the uh, half mile Bristol Banks. And Dick Trickle is right in front of the leader right now, about to go two laps down. Remember, he stayed up there for a long time. John Kernan has more on the possible relief drivers. Well, Bob Dick Trickle has indeed said he's just worn out in the race car. He is asked to Kenny Wallace, whom he relieved under that first caution period because of the broken tip of his right scapula. Kenny has put his driver's seat back on. He's standing by down in his pit, waiting to see if Trickle will indeed pull in and ask for relief. That'll be interesting if we see Kenny Wallace go back in the car because he got out as early as possible due to his shoulder injury, but now he may get back in the car. And right now, Dick Trickle is trying to stay in the lead lap in that Dirt Devil Pontiac. He's, he's one lap down. He's trying to keep from going two laps down. Exactly. And meanwhile, Rusty Wallace has a bumper pull off Mark Martin right behind him. Rusty had moved out of about six or eight car lengths in front of Mark until he caught up to Trickle and hasn't been able to do much with him, and Mark has caught back up to him. Now Jimmy Means is up there ahead of Trickle, and it becomes even more congested in turn three. And again, we said that Jeff Gordon might be uh, asking for relief. Is that what your sources say, Jerry? 
exactly. Jeff Gordon does not have a carbon monoxide problem. What he's got is basically he's sick on his stomach from an intestinal flu. I went over and talked to Ray Everham just a minute ago, and Ray said, we can't find anyone to put in the race car. He said, as a matter of fact, he looked at me and said, you've got a fire suit on. What size helmet do you wear? <laughs> I said, no, not me. 